Hey folks, welcome back to Game Trip. This is Juna, and I wanted to talk more about the psychology of Riku, our little sun warrior here, because he has this sort of inner resistance to inner resistance to himself that kind of foils him at every end. And he's gone to both extremes of um, light, or he's been to both extremes of light and darkness. And the sort of method he uses to try and get out of this ends up undoing him a lot. And I think this, the whole rebirth process that he's going through in this game, um, th this particular Kingdom Hearts game, is, um, is trying to sort of solve this inner tug of war that he has with himself. Um, so I do, I want to approach that. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, guys. We'll also kick in lots of butt because I learned, I learned how to fight with Riku and it's fun. And it, and honestly, his, his fighting style kind of reveals a bit too. So let, let's get on the road with this. Let's, let's go and let's see where we're going to go. Agrabah, Monstro, or now, you know what? I was thinking Agrabah. I, I think I did that with Sora, too. Didn't I just go to Agrabah? I, I don't remember, but I like Agrabah. I like its color scheme, so it makes me happy. And I like Aladdin. All right. All right, here we are. Agrabah. Okay, folks. So not a whole lot of cutscenes in these levels from what you were telling me, so we're going to have a lot of time to talk about this stuff, which is pretty exciting because this game um, has been re very revealing for the inner motivations of a lot of the characters for me, and that, that's been really the, 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 the fun thing about it is to sort of get these inner motivations and to see some of the motivations of the organization, um, you know, before... You play two, because a lot of you know that I didn't... I was one of the ones who played two without having played Chain of Memories, like a lot of you did. So, seeing this and understanding it is so... It's doing so much for me. But let's get on to talking about Riku. So, Riku has a hard time, I think, accepting who he is. Even though he's full of ego, he has this inner tug, or, tug of war with himself. Um, now, we see in the first game... That, and if we know some of the backstory that we get from Birth by Sleep, that Riku was originally the light warrior. He was the Keyblade wielder. He had to pass that light on to Sora. And you could say Sora's light is what, you know, um, you know, and, and Sora's accessibility to being able to receive that light or what kind of made him able to take that. And Riku lost that light. He thought he had... I don't know if this was an active decision, but it was definitely at least a subconscious decision that he needed to let go of this light and embrace the darkness so that he could have freedom, you know? And for him and his friends, he just, he thought this is, this is the way we need to go. Um, as often is the case when you're trying to, to get freedom, you know, all of a sudden you want to break apart everything around you and take a sort of, you know, dark, destructive path. You know, which isn't always necessarily negative. Um, but Riku has a habit of taking these things to their extremes. And he does this by abandoning his abandoning his light and sort of going into the darkness. And when he goes into the darkness, he does it with full fervor. He, he goes right into it as hard as he can, you know, because um, he sort of sees this hard path as something that's going to that benefit him, maybe because it's so difficult, as often is the case that a lot of people don't really feel like they're accomplishing something unless they're, they've been put through a lot, you know? This can kind of be seen as, uh, as an addiction to suffering sometimes, you know, um, which can be a really sad situation. And uh, I think Riku at least has a little bit of these characteristics within himself. Um, but now we see that he's trying to get away from his darkness, <laughs> you know? And what's the first thing that happens? Because we know, you know, I mean, the Heartless are a great analogy and, and the nobodies and everything in this game, but, uh, you know, us as whole human beings, um, 
we we have all of these things inside us all the time and and we are these things you know we all have a little heartless within us a little nobody maybe a little dream eater or, or whatever the the other creatures are that are later in the game i i, I don't remember <laughs> you know but these things are great analogies and so we see Riku try to get away from the heartless within himself in this game. And what immediately happens is they all come rushing towards him, you know, and they, they all start fighting. It's basically the only thing he has within himself. And you need a few attachments to be grounded. You know, Riku had a hard desire for the darkness and he made it everything he was. Well, now when he's trying to lose it, he, he's starting to encounter this situation where that, that might be all he has left. Kind of what we got from his uh, conversation with Maleficent, you know. And something that might be good for him to do is to, to maybe not just not force it so hard and, and sort of accept, you know, what he has made of himself and that it may not necessarily be such a negative thing. Because you do, you need a few attachments and may, Riku's atta one of his attachments is the darkness. It's one of the things which defines him. You know, uh, there's an analogy that a knife can't cut itself, right? You know, it, it, you can try all you want to get away from yourself, but when you do, uh, you all you'll ultimately encounter is other things and that can't change the nature of what you are. That work ultimately has to be done inward. Um, which is almost impossible, you know, because uh, the nature of that analogy is that it's very hard to see yourself and very hard to understand yourself. You know, there's like... Uh, it's like pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps. Like, how, how would you actually do that? You know, the, the energy's not there. there. There has to be some sort of other encounter in order for this to happen. Um, but that, that's a whole different thing. <laughs> you know. Uh, but Riku has sort of trapped himself between these two, two because he's, he's playing tug of war by trying to get away from himself in the direction of light, trying to get away from himself in the direction of darkness, and he's always avoiding what he is, you know? And that's the hardest thing, I think, for any of us, really. You know, I think a lot of us, or at least personally, you know, the hardest thing to do is, is to accept what you are. You, you kind of, you want to be something else so desperately. You know, I, I think there's a problem with self-value um, that a lot of people have, and at least in the peop with the people that I've encountered in life, you know, and we tend to have this fleeing away from ourselves, you know, trying to, to get away and kind of at least pretend that we're something different other than what we are, you know. And ultimately, there, you're indefinable, and what you are isn't anything in particular. It's a changing process. Oh, crap, we're, we're, we're fighting Jafar. <laughs> okay, no philosophy during the boss fight. We're going to we're gonna fight the boss. <laughs> yeah, but just kind of keep that in your head. I mean, I'll, if I'll leave you with one thing out of that analogy, just kind of picture if Riku standing on, you know, um, on the planet Earth or something, and he has a rope strung all the way around it and one's light and one's dark, and he's always pulling on one or the other really hard. But this is ultimately just creating a problem for him because, you know, he's attached to both now. And, and playing tug of war with yourself is the most pointless thing you can do. <laughs> oh, I got smacked by the meteor. All right. Yeah. Now let's get that dark mode going. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not focusing. Is he, is he, well, he's not doing anything, so I'm just gonna attack Iago. Yeah, Jafar barely attacks at all. Ugh. Ah, this is stupid. Come on, Jaffer. Okay, we had to break it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, here we go. Well, <laughs> oh, yeah, he's, he's doing the meteor. How about that, Jaffar? Jaffar? <laughs> you Jim Jaffar? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you attacking because it didn't do anything. I, I don't know what, I don't know what he's trying to do. 
Darkness. There it is. There's the darkness. All right, Iago, you're about to get your butt kicked. Poor Iago. Jafar's making him take all the damage in this fight. And honestly, beating up the lamp doesn't doesn't make too much sense on its own either. <laughs> Maybe some of these will hit him. Nope. <laughs> it looks cool, though. Some freaking, you know, I just like, it's kind of like, you know, Riku and Mickey have pistols, and they're like backing each other up, you know. I don't know. No, Jafar, this is not how this is happening. There we go. You gotta use Mickey for the heals. Thank you for the folks in the comments that told me that, because I, I didn't know how to heal otherwise. Okay, looks like we got this. And one more. Haha. <laughs> you know. Alright. Oh, I don't know. Maybe we'll get a cutscene. Let's see what happens. Oh right, I keep forgetting I have I have character cards. I have the <laughs> I haven't been using them at all. Okay, we'll remember that for the next fight. Okay, let's get some health going while these guys are sleeping. Oh, yeah, there goes all the health. Okay. And the trick the trick with Riku is to be fast. I mean let's let's talk about his play style for one as opposed to Sora. So, Riku depends on very quick actions and very little thought. Um, as we, as, as, as you can see, you know, this may just be a gameplay aspect as part of this being a side game and, Riku, and Sora's part being the main, the main, you know, the main show. Oh, I got it! Yeah, that was sick. Um, but you almost have to move without thinking. You gotta throw those cards out. You just have to keep going. Um, and I think that in particular, you know, and that's how, that's using the darkness. That's how you take advantage of the darkness. That's how you build up that darkness power, right? You just got to keep moving, you know, keep throwing those cards out, you know, th throw, throw a higher one really fast. Whereas with Sora, it was more about planning out the slights and, uh, you know, and, and having a good strategy almost to your deck with Riku, it's more reflex. And as you learn that reflex, you learn to use the darkness more efficiently. You know, ultimately, ultimately symbolized by Riku putting on the blindfold, um, which is the point at which I, b I believe that's sort of represent representing uh, him sort of letting go of trying to control things. You know, he, he it's almost like in Zelda. <laughs> Funny that the... Oh, what? I went all the way over... Uh, okay, you no, know, you know, it's fine, it's fine. It's almost like in Zelda with the Lens of Truth. Link had to hop across the feathers over the invisible platforms in order to see the truth. And we're kind of seeing that with Riku here. In order to, to get to where he needs to be, he needs to sort of uh, have some self-abandonment. Something that Sora has an excess of. Riku really needs to try and grasp that if he's to become the Riku we all know and love. And I do believe that he accomplishes this. I really do. Um, and w w which is why he's one of my favorite characters. And there's a phrase he says in... Uh, in Days that that kind of summarizes this for me. And it's when he's talking to Shion. Um, and I forget what she says, but Riku just responds. He's like, I just want my friend back. You know? Which to me sort of symbolizes him letting go and just not trees doesn't want the light in the dark anymore he doesn't want the power he just wants his friend back he wants Sora back you know which is really it's one of the most genuine and, and serene moments in the game in the games in my opinion um, because to me that with Riku wearing the blindfold during that moment it really represents that energy of I finally let go of control I finally stopped trying to pull myself up by my own bootstraps, you know, because at times we do have to just accept who we are. I struggle with this a lot, um, but it can it can be generative. Uh, 
you know, I, I used to want to learn to play the guitar really bad. I would practice all the time and I would, I would focus on it so hard and I just couldn't do it. You know, I got ADHD, so it's hard for me to do most things on a normal day, but, um, I just couldn't do it. And, uh, I tried it again when I was like 20 and I got a little better, but it was still just like something that felt impossible, you know? And I finally just accepted that I just, it's just one of those things. I, I don't know, maybe I needed to learn it when I was younger, um, or something. And I, di I didn't know, I really didn't know how, how to handle that. So I just kind of gave up. Well, then I just started hanging out with people who had instruments. I can't, I think I keep going the wrong way. <laughs> I kept hanging out with people who had instruments and I would just kind of diddle on them without care. You know, I just kind of, I had given up on playing the guitar, but as I diddled on them, I started hearing things that I liked and I started just trying to make myself feel good with the music. And, and then it just happened. And I, I, you know, I'm not a great guitar player or anything, but you hand me the instrument and I can play you some freaking music. Whereas before I would, I was focusing so much on it and it was the giving up that ultimately allowed me to free up the energy to do it, you know? It was just to accept that I'm not going to be, you know, Ingwe Malmsteen or, you know, Slash or anything, you know, I'm, but I, I might be able to just play something that makes me happy. And, and that was enough, and that's ultimately what I wanted, you know? Uh, so that's, that's a way in which it applied personally to me, but, you know, I, I think this, in a more dramatic way, very much helps Riku out in, in his path. And in, in, in general, it's just a great lesson for, for everyone, you know. Because um, it's, it's hard to get away from yourself. It really is. Not impossible, you know, but I think it requires a certain mental acceptance to free up the energy to be able to do so. All right, let's head in here. I take it you're Riku. Are you with Ansem? You are half correct. Let us say that he is not the Ansem with which you are familiar. He How do you know which Ansem I know? He is not Ansem. Oh, he's talking about Xehanort. Perhaps nobody best conveys the idea. Riddles were never my thing. Try again. He belongs to neither the light nor the dark, but walks the twilight between. Oh. <laughs> Catching on now? Oh, yes. You also stand in between the light and the darkness. It appears we have much in common. Maybe. Like you said, there really is darkness left inside of me. But so what? Darkness is my enemy. So he still, he really hasn't accepted it yet. Oh, so it's a fight you want. Very good. I shall take you on. You know, but I think Diz is being a very good guru here. Also, I need to kick Vexen's butt. He needn't revenge. Revenge for last time, Vexen. I cheesed him last time because he made me so mad. So I, I need to officially beat up Vexen with somebody. Here anyway. Ah! Uh, gotcha! Ha! Oh, 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 cool. Okay, I need to focus on fighting Vexen. Um, ah, I had something cool to say. It's okay, it's okay, it's fine. Here you go. Here you go. I shall freeze you. Oh, I got away. I got away from your slight, man. Ugh. Here it is. You're doomed, dude. How about one of those? Here you go. Taste this. Come on. Gotcha. Oh, oh, cool. Oh, cool. What? Whoa, I'm so happy. What? What's going on? Yeah, yeah, you're so screwed, Vexen. Wow. This is great. Uh-oh. Come 
Oh, he got me. He got me. No. Oh, well, that was such a cool fight, though. Wow. That was... I, uh, I feel like a little kid. <laughs> that was so much fun. Okay, let's do this again. Wow. Wow, wow, that was fun. I'm, I'm kind of speechless. That, that is just fun combat. No complaints. Five star. I, I, I would recommend this combat to a, to another customer. Okay. Break him. Got the darkness, yes. No, we're gonna do this again. I shall put up. Taste this. Here you go. Oh, get the zero. Jeez, no, I don't like that. Uh, he's getting one ready. Got it, okay. See, I'm thinking too much and I'm not doing as well as I was before. Wow, he's got... Wow, I'm really railing on him right now. Wow! Oh, Mickey! Ah, uh, okay. Got him, got him. Oh, but he got me. Okay, wow. I'm not going to want to have to cut this. We got to take this guy out. You know, it's definitely going to be the finale of the episode, but... Wow. Okay. The trick, the trick is not to think. You know, I've been listening recently to this <clears throat> sort of philosophy about letting go of, of the bowstring and firing an arrow, you know, and, and um, the trick to it is you have to think and act at the same time. And I think that's the trick to beating this fight. Uh-oh. Got him. I would not be doing as well if not for the commenters who have given me advice on how to do this sort of fight. There it is again. Nice. <laughs> oh, wow. We're really beating him this time. Oh, he got me before I could get him. Darkness is back, man. Ah, come on. Oh. This is rough. Okay, we come on. We got this. Yes, yes. Ah. Uh-oh. I got nothing. <laughs> oh, he got me. Okay. Oh, man. Okay. I've got this under control. Freaking long-ass battle. Oh, okay, this is the one. We have to just focus. Use the force. Wait. No, the light. One of them. We gotta use something. 
All right. All right. Gotcha. Okay, here we go. Ah! So that seems to work out basically every time as long as I hit all the buttons. Okay, got him. Let's get some slights off. Okay, let's do this. This is it. This is the cool thing. Got him. Yeah! <laughs> yes! That does the most damage, I am so sure. Okay, that wasn't so bad. You are cursing it. Come on. Whoa, we dueled off a slight? That's pretty r rare, I think. Like it. Like it. You are just an experiment. Here you go. Take this. Okay. Just me. Okay, we got him. Got him cornered. Yes. I think this is the one, guys. Ah, he froze me. He did what he said he was gonna do. Oh, he broke it. Whew. Dang it. No, oh, that was the one. Okay, I'm going to have to cut this. Uh, here we go. Oh, man. Man. <laughs> It would have been so cool to get him in that first fight. That first fight was perfect. Okay, focus. Focus time. Time to focus on focusing. Wait, don't focus. Okay, and just smack him. That seems to have a good stun on it. When I'm in dark mode, he can't seem to catch up with me. Here you ah. go. Well, let's use it anyway. Here we go. I shall you. Nice. Okay, we got away from it. Here you go. <laughs> Dang it. Ah. You can lose it as soon as you get it. Not much ways to heal either. It's very difficult. Oh, good. Taste this. Ah! Okay, here we are. It's like attempt six and or wait, let's do it up. Okay, here we are. It's like attempt freaking six now. Uh, Vexen, you're, you no one even likes you, okay? You know, I don't, I don't need to feel this way. Taste this. Just me. Yeah, I like it. When I, whenever I get the, the, the battle, I win every time. So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy whenever that happens. Because that's just like a free win for me. Do it again, Vexen. What do you got? Me too. You know what? <laughs> Try it again. <laughs> oh, you're so done, dude. <laughs> Get away from this. Yes, Mickey. Oh, he broke it. 
Oh, here we go. We got him now. Got it. Here it is. Yeah. Two swords, one sword, which is that's kind of an interesting attack, isn't it? Oh, he's just stunned. It stuns him when that happens. That's nice. Wow, we are really just beating the crap. I don't even know why I was so upset earlier. Okay. Like it. You imbecile. Take this. Okay. Mickey. Give me power, Mickey. Oh, yes. Okay, this is it. No time to hold back. Yes! Wow! Wow, what a fight. That was cool. Oh, okay, I'm starting to get worried that that was going to take me a really long time. <laughs> oh, man. That was fun, though. I, I think that was the most fun I've had in a fight since I started the Chain of Memories. So, that was a really good Kingdom Hearts battle and just RPG battle in general. I'm kind of taken aback. Some more darkness points. <laughs> I find coursing through you there is a darkness of formidable power growing, well worth the trouble of aggravating you. All this excitement has provided me with invaluable data. What? <laughs> Many thanks, Riku. Oh, it's okay. We'll beat you up later. Or er, actually, Axel. Kills him, so. Yeah, it's okay, Riku. I feel bad about it, too. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did a pretty. He did a pretty bad beating on us, though, I will admit. So, Vexen's pretty tough. All right, folks. I will see you next time on Game Trip, and we'll, we're going to keep talking about Riku's rebirth path here, because this is super interesting. Um, and, yeah, I'll see you next time. Wow, 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 wow.